California and we ended up being transferred here from Palm Springs. They were um, watching her closely in the womb and they found out that she was going to be born with a heart condition. So they sent us here to Loma Linda so she could continue her treatment. After she was born, she went through a number of procedures, uh, certain surgeries to correct the issue that she had with her heart. And there was hopes that through the completion of that procedure, she would grow and, and have a normal heart and a normal life once again. And it wasn't until uh, August of 2015 that we started noticing some symptoms and some signs that we weren't sure of what it was, but it concerned us very much. So uh, we ended up having to bring her back down here to Loma Linda, where they diagnosed it as the beginning stages of heart failure. And it wasn't bad enough to admit her into the hospital, but it was high enough concern for her to be put on the transplant list. And it was just a, a waiting game after that. There was, there was no time reference for when the heart could come. There was no anything except keep hanging on and keep letting her live as much of a normal life as possible. And that's what we did up until August 4th. You know, we had our, our own plan. We had our own desires. We had everything we wanted all planned out, you know, as far as work goes and moving into a new apartment and setting up our living conditions and how we were gonna plan for the next school year and I, I planned a business trip for a week long. And it was right when I hung up the phone of getting ready to book this hotel that I see Carla's face saying, we have to go. And I said, what? And she said, we have to go now, the heart came in. And that was August 4th. And that was just like that. We realized how um, really frail our own plans were and that there was a different idea for us and the things that needed to happen and how they were gonna happen. And we just had to really give our lives over to helping Bree and set everything aside. And we moved here and we've been here since. Yeah, it was like being handed this detailed instruction booklet, you know, and we're sitting at home not really having an idea of what it's gonna look like as it goes together and all these pieces fall into place. And it wasn't until we actually got the call and came that we started to see what that instruction manual was all about, that each piece was adding up to something. And we had so many different hands putting together the, the pieces of Breonna's life to, to get us where we're sitting now uh, with Steven's hope. And we really had no idea uh, the commitment, the the financial responsibility that was going to happen. We, we had to leave our lives in Yucca Valley, uh, our apartment, our car payments, our insurance. We had to leave all of that, which is still very real and still there today, and start a whole new life here. Not, not with a bunch of planning, but a phone call and an instant that changed from August 4th to August 5th with her coming out on the gurney with the heart transplant completed. And they said, okay, this is what we do now. At first we, everybody was so busy. We, we just landed in a hotel and we would commute back and forth from the hotel and stay there and not really have time to think about what was happening. It was just all we knew is we had to be somewhere at a certain time. And that's what we did. Prior to this, we had been living in a single hotel room with one king bed and two cots. So with no kitchen, no anything. We, no sink, which was so necessary because of the cleanliness that had to be provided for Breonna in the new condition. I mean, they shut down her immune system. So we're living in this little single room with a single bed and no way to cook and prepare and provide. And we did that for nearly two weeks. And it, and it wasn't until we started okay, Steven's hope's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. And, and we didn't know where it was. We didn't know what to expect, just that it was an apartment that was fully furnished. And sure enough, we, we got here and we walked in the door and we were so excited. It was the feeling of walking into a new home. Like when we just moved to our new apartment in Yucca Valley, it was that, ah, that refreshing, we can finally settle down. 
we have a place where we can store our things and we can just sit and breathe for a minute. If Breonna needs to sit in the room by herself, she can have it. If Carla needs to lay down and take a nap in quiet, she can. And it, it was a huge blessing to be able to have that. It was a relief. I was thinking, okay, what exactly is fully furnished? <laughs> when we got here, I noticed that I started, the farther I walked into the apartment, I started noticing, oh, there's sheets, there's towels, there's everything. There's food in the pantry, there's um, hand soap on all the sinks, there's a patio with a chair and a table on it, in the shade. <laughs> I'm like, wondering, is there anything there's not? <laughs> Do I need to go to the store? No, I don't need to go to the store. <laughs> And it was so neat for us when we walked into this place, you not knowing what to expect and, and walking in and just, I remember our faces lit up as we, we got in and there was certain things already hanging on the walls. Mm -hmm. And it, it may sound silly, but there was a, a shower curtain and these little soap holders that were owls that we would actually have in our house. And we just looked at each other and laughed, you know, and we stood right there in the hallway and gave each other a hug because it was like walking home and it made us feel comfortable again and it made us smile and it was a, a brief glimpse of something that we've been missing for some time and that it just kept getting better yeah i was thinking about it last night as i was laying in bed i was actually thinking and two words kept coming to my mind and it was hope and peace and it was just a saying for me as a you know, things start to get overwhelming. Hope for the moment and peace in the circumstances. And that's what we've been provided. We have that. We have that here at Stevens Hope. <laughs> it's a little. We know that if she does get sick, we're seven minutes from the hospital. We know that if she goes into rejection, we can leave our things, lock the door, and go. And then if, if it winds down, we have a place to come back to. After the doctor's trips, the clinic visits, and she has to wake up super early in the morning for a blood draw, which she hates, and she screams and cries. We have a place where we can lay her right back down in her bed, and she can fall asleep again until we have to go back for the results. For the days when we have to go in for a, a biopsy, and she has to get a, a catheter through her neck or through her leg, she has to lay in the hospital bed again. She has a place to come back, to rest and to relax, where we can cook her a meal, where we can watch a movie, where she can watch Talking Tom on the computer that's been provided. Everything's provided. We have a phone line in case we need to make a phone call. We have our own parking spot. It's hope for the moment and peace in the circumstances. That's what's been provided.